Something important happened on Sunday evening. You wrote about it on your Facebook page and I wanna ask you about it. So this is around a Senate bill, the five o'clock bill on Sunday. Tell us what happened. The bill um, that we're talking about um, was a bill to help our school leaders and administrators uh, move better into a better place with inclusion and welcoming of all people uh, in the schools. It's no secret that we have a problem and that problem extends into our schools. It's not just um, bullying, um, but it is. It, it can be worse than that for a, a brown or a black child, a child that's different or speaks another language. And we need to do better. We need to do better in all of our institutions. We know we have systemic racism. There's never been a moment where there is a greater need uh, to move forward. And this bill was one that I gladly embraced. It came over from the Senate. My caucus was, was ready, but there was an amendment uh, introduced that would undo and deny everything that this bill was trying to make whole and healthy. And um, it had an incredible impact. Most of my caucus got up and spoke. We usually, um, are circumspect about how, how many people talk. We don't intend to go on and on and on, but there was so much to say and I didn't speak. The reason I didn't speak was that my, my, my heart was so broken hearing the lived experiences of the people I work with every day, the things that are still going on, the moments that parents can't protect their children, um, the fears that the mothers of um, young men have when those men, young men leave the house. Um, those lived experiences have never been my experiences as a, as a white woman, um, but it is intolerable. And I couldn't speak because I didn't think the words could get through the tightness in my throat. But I haven't been able to leave those speeches behind um, of course we passed the bill. I was sad that um, there were so many people that voted for that amendment. The amendment was handily defeated, but so many people voted for that amendment and it shows how much work we still have to do. Um, government can do a lot, but it's up to every single one of us uh, to be kind, to be conscientious and to know that in order to reach um, justice and kindness and inclusiveness in our society, we all have a responsibility to step up. Those of us that are safe um, need to acknowledge that and to not be afraid to learn about the lived experience of others who are not privileged, who are different, and who are still not welcomed in every part of our society. As a leader, um, there is no work that's more important uh, than that work. I will not always be a legislator. I will live in, the, in my community and in this world. And this work has to keep going. It's not something you do and then you're done. Every generation needs to know the history of how we came to be who we are and who we want to be and how we get there. And there are many paths, but cruelty and divisiveness are not the way to go. Inclusiveness and acknowledging our past and making a better future are what we should be about. And it was never so clear to me as it was this past Sunday night when so many people shared such personal moments and such painful moments uh, with the public and with each other. Um, I'm still processing what happened, but I don't think there's anything more important uh, than we, that we've done this year. We have very few days left before the end of the session. We still have a lot to do and we've done a lot of good things, but we had a, a moment and a conversation that must continue. 
and I intend to be part of that conversation.